looking for you. Walk with me to. Cake. You make this yourself? No, sir. My mama does a scotch cake, sir. Oh, oh, my, my mama does a scotch cake, too. Sometimes without the cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 funny. Come on. Oh, man, I'm going to have me a hat miss just like her. <laughs> Still mm. falling for the wrong girl. Little brother, you got nothing to your name but a piece of pie, and you can't get a fine slave woman like that on a piece of pie. Well, Father says he's gonna line up 10 or 15 of the slave women for me to pick from. I'll have the pick of the litter. I should have no trouble, sir. <laughs> Robinette, come here, girl. Now, where are your manners? I should look for it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a keep, miss, I think you can afford. Oh, She'll on. make a wonderful house pet, and she's from good stock, too. <laughs> that Miss Millie sure lost her self for mm -hmm. I wasn't sure how I was. Slaves weren't allowed to know her birthdays. My brother, sisters, and I all work for the big house for the master. It is December 18th, 1830, and this is the Bad Family Plantation, just 10 miles from Yanceyville in Louisa County, Virginia, where my mother, brothers and sisters, and I were all slaves of Master John Barrett. We were just little children sitting on the, the master's chimney corner listening to him scamper about, and I remember that day as good as it's this day right here. Master Barrett was the former mayor of Richmond and had four sons, William, John, Strong, and Charles. And as the master grew gravely ill, our family worried if he would ever submit to us our freedom papers, as he often promised he would. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Lillian. Happy birthday to you. And Grandpa Barrett will join us today with a gift and a surprise. He's feeling better, so maybe he can make us all smile, not just the birthday girl. Oh, it's called the Master Barrett Oh. Don't you stand that gate and get his coat. Yes, Mrs. Barrett. Well, Grandpa Barrett, you can have the cakes and tea. Yes, ma'am. Dear one, <clears throat> I was sitting on my bed thinking what could we do to amuse ourselves when I got it into my head that we should go to the magic show oh, in Richmond. Oh, 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 do you really like the idea? Yes, <laughs> Mother Barrett. Oh, the wisely and slow father, they stumble that run fast. <laughs> You charm me, dear, with Shakespeare. I shall oblige. <laughs> oh, besides, girls, you are too young to go to Richmond. Mama, I'm not too young. You said so yourself that I'm old enough to even have my own, my very own Negro. Oh, well. All right, as long as you promise not to overextend your grandfather. Yes. What can you go, tomorrow? Today? Oh. <laughs> he got 160 acres and he a good and decent man. I don't care what he's got. He's got no business with you. You got no business talking to that man here. Ooh, mama gonna kill you. <laughs> don't get jealous because I'll be the missus' favorite child. And the master always looking to me to do something for That's him. That's what I'm afraid of, child. Now you mind your business and you keep your tongue. 
Yeah. <laughs> How about another song? Ezra? Oh, there's oh, there's there's oh, oh Dan Tucker. Oh, what oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Old Dan Tucker was a fine old man. He washed his face with a frying pan. And rubbed his hair with a wagon wheel. Fly with the toothpaste in his it was not my fortune to be long under my mother's care, but she is vivid in my memory. As far back as I could recollect, my mother would whisper songs into our ears and music. While music was woven into our lives, our grandmother's lives, and her mother's lives before that, a chain of life that takes us to the far shores of Africa. Our grandmother made history sing. She was simple, unadorned, and unfussy. But when it came to the music and the drumming, she was as utterly strained as the wind. And when they took away her drums, why did her feet took over? <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother always hoped that her music would stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was much too young to understand time, much less understand the stresses that would be thrust upon us. The mass had always been good to our family. But our mother knew that would change. Mother would always gather us around with young Henry on her knee, pointing out to the forest trees she would say to us. My children, as leaves are swept away from the trees of the forest, so were the children of slaves swept away from them by the hands of the cruel tyrant. I was then young, but I well recollect the sadness on my mother's countenance and her mournful words, which were well impressed upon my youthful mind. Mothers of the North, as you gaze upon the fair forms of your idolized little ones, just pause for a moment. How do you feel if you knew that at any time by the will of a tyrant, your children will be kept away from you forever from your embrace? <laughs> Upon the death of our old master, 
His property was inherited to his four sons. So the slaves, along with his personal belongings, furniture and all, was divided equally amongst them. So while Master William prays to God to protect his prophets, we praise to God to keep us with our family. Mm -hmm. Mama, the dogs are barking. children were inherited by the other three sons, except Henry, who Master William took to work in the tobacco factory, and Martha, who the master kept as his cute miss. But Mama, Hush, girl, you will be schooled, you will be well traveled, free to work inside their home. I won't hold you back, girl. <laughs> Thus Henry's mother washed all her children be ripped away like those leaves are all in the tree. this young boy, that he is a smart boy and must never be whipped. Yes, sir. What's your name, boy? 
Can't you hear, boy? They call him Henry. And you his sister? No, sir. Just took away the guy. Well, can he speak for himself? Yes, sir. Normally, we talk of the storm. Thing is, his mama and his sisters, they took away from him. And I reckon he's just killed for something. The only thing I remember about that day was lots of crying when they took me away from my mom. That's something I'll never forget. How old are you? Don't know for sure. What happened to your shoes? I took them off. They hurt. First chance I get, I'm going to be free. Boy, you better stop that talk. Ain't no free. Free? It's how I always was going. Mr. Gregory was my first overseer. He was a colored man, generally considered a shrewd and sensible man. Now, you get a leaf like this, and you lay it on your knee, and you fold it, like you see her doing. And you take this bundle here, and you twist it, mm -hmm. like this, all day. All day. Yeah. Right. All day. Now, we use hickory charcoal to cure the tobacco, mm -hmm. but it don't all come out the same. Mm -hmm. Say like this one, it's a little lighter. It's what we call best scrape. Mm -hmm. Now, but this one, too dark and going trash. Right. You just check the looks and the texture and give them a grade. After they've been graded, we fill the trenches under the curing house outside mm -hmm. and wait for the tobacco bottles. Yeah. They be telling us what they gonna pay for it, and we be at their mercy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're smart, this talent is gonna make you rich someday. <laughs> Mrs. Gregory was very kind to me indeed. He even gave me board and lodging in his own house. Don't you have a master? Uh, my master? Uh, he been there for some years now. Family sold me to Master Henry, who was held me in good faith. My master sold and bought me twice in the same day. What? They stands me on a block of wood and bit on me. And the man what brought me made me open my mouth while he looks at my teeth. Oh. I felt mad. Sounds like you said a horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, his, his family took all he had, uh, his will and whatnot, and all that he had, uh, what's that word again? Bequeathed. Bequeathed. Mm -hmm. And burned. Hmm. Well, if I had a penny for every tale of lost freedom papers. You could buy yourself. <laughs> hey, you said one more word about your masters, and they're going to skin you alive before they boil you alive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's get some work done. Yes, Wilson Gregory advised me to learn and keenly observe the tobacco business. I therefore did and became very good at my job. But as time went on, 
So St. Gregory fell ill and came upon an untimely death. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. I'm troubled, Lord, walk with me. When I'm troubled, Lord, walk with me. Lord, where my head is bowed in sorrow, Lord. I want Jesus to walk with me. After his lamented death. We were left under the care of one of the meanest and cruelest men that I've ever known. A man named Stephen Bennett, who had a wooden leg. Keep your people behind our backs, listening behind us. Don't let his wooden leg betrays him every time. Here he comes. I reckon he can smell it when you're not working. Do not tear that the back of me, boy. What's my name, boy? Didn't hear you! Master Ben. If you make a mistake, Master Ben will beat you double.
And during that time, not having seen his mother, his feelings were very much tried by the separation which he had to endure. <laughs> One day, he met Nancy, a distant beauty who was shopping for her mistress. I, I just stood there, Spella, too, just to watch her disappear on the street through the store window. And my thoughts, they start swirling around like those uh, whirly snowflakes in the winter. And all at once, I, I felt my feet start to lift off the ground. I yearn to see what makes her smile. Uh, may I carry your heavy load, miss? <laughs> you from around here? Uh, no, ma'am. I just come a long way in search for my family. Your family? Yes. Name's Henry. Name's Nancy. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Sundown by the old little elm gum tree next uh, next to the oak tree that looks like a chair. Sing in the streets. Instead, I just hummed. I hummed all the way home. on the time we agreed, <laughs> and there she'd be, wrapped tip to toe so nobody would see her. I yearn to speak, but I daren't, so here we sit by this little fire I made with no thoughts to the world. Looking to start a new life, looking for you.
for no gossip, Miss Hazel. Uh, but I heard that Henry is thinking of entering the matrimonial state. Yes, Henry has formed an acquaintance with that young woman, Nancy. Uh, she belongs to Master Lee at the bank. Oh. Uh, hey, Miss Hazel, why do you know that Mary has no children? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Mary? Oh, no, no. I never marry because one bad experience is enough for me. <laughs> one day the master calls me and says, Woman, I pay his big money for you and Rufus, a crazy big colored man who was a real bully. And he says to me, Woman, I put you to live with Rufus because I want you to raise me children. So you have no children, Miss Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. My master's a decent enough man, but he tried to force that Rufus on me, and I'll tell you, my hands were double fists behind my back, just about to wallop that Rufus when he tried to climb on top of me. <clears throat> and, well, let's just say, the Lord will have to forgive this colored woman, excuse me, and look for some others to plenish the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so we went up to get married. I went to Nancy's master, and he gave me a note to give to my master. And I had a note to give to my master. And then after they discussed the proposal over and over and over, and over again. <laughs> Oh, 
is as cocky as the king of spades. Oh. 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 your proposal to purchase Nancy very carefully, Henry. <laughs> She's a good breeder, Henry. I could get a lot more for her. <laughs> so we, we just you can always get yourself another wife. Not like the rest of us. <laughs> I do not wish for another wife. The one whom I've loved for so long. Oh, that God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. We don't make the rules, Henry. And besides, you are too ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> Is ambition a virtue for slave owners, but a, a sin for slaves? How much further provocation are we to endure from you, boy? The more licenses we allow you, the more you take. <laughs> Black Jet! Oh, oh, oh. Kidding me. <laughs> About all the ingratitude we can take, boy. Oh, forgive me, Mr. Lee. I, I forgot my place. Nancy, refresh us. That Henry is a pernicious force of manipulation. There's nothing more devious in the mind of a Negro man. Amen to that. It kind of reminds me of my wife. I offer her sherry, she takes the whiskey. <laughs> now you gotta let them know who's boss. Come on. God has dealt me a bad hand, dear friends. Oh, it was Henry who was overplaying his hand. Oh, and I believe he has just played his very last card. Ain't that right, Ezra? Yes, ma'am. I want money, and money I will have. Oh, 
All he kept saying no, was... No, we can't even eat. We'll feed our children. All he kept saying was, I want money and money I will have. Perhaps he's going to take my children. <sighs> Master Lee has lost a great deal of money, Henry. And I'm afraid he's going to sell my children, Henry. Come on, come on, Henry. I'm... I... I'm fleeing this place, and you all are coming with me. I ain't getting on no horse with no knight in shining armor. You hear now, Nancy? God is still looking on. I know. I know. <laughs> That Nancy's manners are too refined for a slave. <laughs> but they hear what? Has she not performed her duties? I have witnessed your keen attention to her everywhere. That's not it's, it's her air of pride that you find troubling. <laughs> I believe it is time we sell Nancy to the Colquitts. Not until the price is right. How much do the Colquitt estate bequeath their son? The sum of 10000 They want to buy Nancy for $450. Ah, Henry! Now, Henry, upon your advance of the sum of $50, I will let you keep your Nancy which would prevent your wife and family from being sold away from you. But, of course, you can't stay here. You yourself will have to hire a house, furnish it with everything you and your wife need. But Mrs. and Miss, Miss Master Lee, it takes nearly all that I make to pay for my wife's hire, to keep us in meat and clothes, our ties to our master, and if I've made anything more than that, I've, I've paid it to you in advance. What more can I do? You expect me to take all the risks while you keep the profit. <laughs> now, Henry, we remind you, you're in no position to bargain with us. He asked us to only continue serving both of our masks together. Now, Henry, just as sure as the stars be shining, you know you can count on my word. You do your part. You have my pledge that we will not Separate your children from you and your Nancy. Henry. I am counting on you. You see how much Master Lee and I have done for you. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Lee, thank you. Mrs. Lee, Master Lee. <laughs> you never look more at home, my dear, than when you are. Straightening out my colors. <laughs> yes, well, I know how not to spoil my Negroes. Well, you do my fighting, and I'll do your thing. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh. The fight had not been long, however, after Master Lee made his pledge, that his conscientious scruples vanished. Then, in 1848, when Nancy Brown was pregnant with her fourth child, Henry. Henry. Henry, you've got to go away. What happened? What'd you hear? I hear his masterly loud talking with a trader man who's looking to buy. Henry, your wife and children were just taken to the slave market. <coughs> I couldn't think. I couldn't move. Henry twisted tobacco leaves like his hair, his heart twisted in his chest. At lunchtime, Henry ran to the center of town. Soon he was witnessing the approach of 350 slaves who were all tied together. Let's go! What should I now 
seat, but right in the very front of the wagon, a young child pitifully calling.
of happy times. But all I could see were those cards carrying away everyone that I loved. I may never see my family. Hesitate much about his role in a slave holding congregation. We have to get back to simple truths, darling. Forget about all that intellectualism, all this questioning. Questioning God or questioning man? No. Which do you mean? Well, yes. I think we ought to keep things simple. Keep ignorant. Ignore our conscience. Is that what you mean? I'm sure the world would be a better place if we just looked the other way. I am a man of God. I minister morality. But you need not play God. You have been spending too much time with those northerners where life is a little more extreme. Hear me now, my dear. I am overcome with a sense of doing wrong. And this is no time for your doubts and to give up your preaching, your livelihood. How would we live? In preaching and in singing for the purpose of obtaining money? To assist those who are buying and selling their fellow men? My prayers have awakened in me such feelings. I can no longer live. I will no longer be guilty of assisting slave dealers. You will elicit a carnage. A carnage you cannot stop. Does that not bear on your conscience? My conscience? How? How can I minister morality to others when I'm not even sure that I have one myself? God can paint a sunrise, he can make a man feel small, but if God bestows the gift of sight, then that sunrise is for all, and my soul has kissed the soul of every person in this church, and I know there's truth in finding God, but there's beauty in the search, and I refuse. 
to stand by any longer. I refuse to knock down other men just to make some men feel stronger. I refuse to think that God has placed me here to refuse to help a fallen man and succumb to mortal fear. Right and wrong is black and white. Yes, God's watching from above. But you see, to cease your servants is to bring pain to your wife. And our children will go hungry. All they'll know is pain and strife. So be strong, for I must in my crusade. We'll be strong, for God's will must be obeyed. And skin color doesn't tell a man the way he should behave. Though I'm free, I know how it feels to be enslaved. I refuse to stand by any longer. I refuse to knock down other men just to make something feel stronger. I refuse to think that God has placed me here to refuse to help a fallen man and succumb to mortal fear. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. Don't be rash. Please pray. God will make this clear as the noonday sun. Henry had for a long while been a member of the church choir in Richmond but began to strongly suspect the Christianity of the slaveholding members of the church and hesitated much about maintaining his connection with the church. Suspicious of those slaveholding Christians was Henry absent from church till Christmas Day, 1848. <clears throat> Who gave you a master and a mistress? God gave them to us. Who says you must obey them? God says I must. Slaves. Obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, fearing the Lord. Ephesians 6, 5. Amen. What makes the crops so hard to grow now? Sin makes it. What makes you lazy? My wicked heart. How do you know that your heart is wicked? I feel it every day. Satan has taught you so many wicked things that you have lied to the Holy Spirit. I cannot continue. I kneel beside you here today. I kneel beside you and I pray. Let Jesus fill you with his love. Abundant love from God above. Their feet he lovingly does bathe. I stand before you, I'm just a man. I need your help to understand. Friends, I've been struggling for a long time with the feeling that I've been an imposter. My search for the truth has revealed discoveries, and thus my thoughts have been mired in confusion and dismay. My dear brethren, I can no longer adhere to a slaveholding Christianity, but to shake it my very core. And I stand before you with the firm conviction we are witnessing the most abominable conflict and worst inclination known to men. This slaveholding religion is a total aberration, a destruction of the very image of God.
the man who hesitates to do the right thing when he knows it is wrong and he does nothing has buried himself within himself. And this is what is to hold on just a little while longer. No, no, dear Reverend, it is you who is as good as dead for the heretical doctrine that you are preaching yes, here. Amen. spiritual battle with evil. Dear friends, do not underestimate the power of evil to wreak havoc. None of us can deny that as believers in Christ, we are all members of the family of God. Henry, ain't you afraid to do such a thing? 
all men are afraid to do something for the first time. And those who conquer their fears will find the rewards. I shall have my freedom. Or die in the attempt. Die? I ain't die for no Yankees. <clears throat> Nothing but troublemakers, them northern boys. Them Yankees ain't talking about no freedom. Besides, ever since Master died, I ain't had no trouble from my mistress. Tell you what, since then, nothing like walking at the break of day across the frosty field to the big house to build a fire for my mistress. And when she wake up slow, I ever appreciate my labor. And with great appreciation say, how's my Negro doing today? <laughs> it don't get better than that. I'll tell you that for nothing. Well, sure enough, after old Ned got such a terrible whooping, just praying for freedom. She slipped off north. Yes, indeed, that same, same Yankee North, indeed. Then he wrote back to Master Tom. He said, I'm laying down now. And I'm getting up, Master. <laughs> Which meant that he, he laid down when he wanted to and got up when he pleased to. And that's the way to do it. <laughs> the freedom I speak of, but it's nothing like it. It's like sitting under the shade of a peach tree, reaching up and grabbing that ripe peach and eating it right slow. Or it's just sitting here, right? Under the moonlight, just laughing, playing this harmonica without a fear of a whooping. That's the freedom I'm talking about. And that's why I leave it. Where to? Oh, there's a twenty place to go to. How he gonna eat? Well, with what? How he getting this work? With, with, with money. How he getting this shot of fortune? <laughs> <laughs> I will nail myself in a box to a place where there are no slaves. What? Henry? Wait, 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 wait. Can you shut up in a box, Henry? What, what if you cough? Can somebody hear you? I'll cover my mouth and hope. What about food and water? Well, I will find some water to splash my face if I feel faint, and I, and I have this here dollar to poke in into the box. Just trust me. I got a plan. <laughs> Smell it? You smell it? That smell of freedom. Oh, that smells it all right. That smells it. <laughs>
I heard that your wife and children were sold in the slave market. I cannot imagine your pain. Well, in your brand of religion, sir, my pain is worth less than that of an animal. All men are equal in the eyes of God. And what do you offer me? Equality? Mm. I seek my freedom, and the Lord will be by my side. Reverend Smith, I've seen you looking for ways to slacken the burden of the Negro. I pray fervently, sir, and an idea has flashed across my mind. Offer me your confession. I can offer you God's forgiveness. I do not seek forgiveness. Unburden yourself to the Lord, and you will be free. Free. That's how I'm always going to be. I had the notion to shut myself up in this box, conveyed as dry goods, shipped to a free state. Henry, a free state? Nailed in this box? As your minister, no, I, this is not God's will. I don't know if it's God's will for me to cross this terrain, but I do know it is the devil who puts fear in our hearts. As your minister, I must advise caution, caution. Caution be damned. As my friend, are you a friend? Caution be damned, Henry! Wait. Sam, Sam, the storekeeper, says Samuel Smith. He knows people up north who can receive you. Meet me one week from today at 4 a.m. at the abandoned warehouse on Pearl Street, and I will load you upon the express train. Thank you. Henry, you are everything I seek to be. He will make the world fairer. God be with you. Leave the plow stays in your hand. Land you straight to the promised land. Keep your hands on that plow. Hold on. Thank you.
whom he used to purchase his provisions and of whom he had a favorable opinion. Here you go, ma'am. Bacon, bread, and cigars. Thank you, Sam. Henry. That's the Samuel Smith. You know, if I, if I were free, I'd be able to do business such as you're doing. Why, your occupation as a tobacconist is a money-making endeavor. And if you were free, you would have no need to change to another type of profession. And if you had my store, what would you do with it, Henry? Well, I'd, I'd work very hard. I'd save every penny. Uh -huh. I'd buy my wife and children back. Henry, boy, bring me that canteen. Are you not afraid to speak of this matter to me? May I speak freely? You show no inclination to speak otherwise. <laughs> I've long imagined that you too believe every man deserves the right to liberty. Imagined, yes, but realized is another story. And what if they don't sell back your wife and children? I steal her back. Sell a man for slavery it ain't right. It's the way it is. It's the way it's always been. I know what I see. see a man who doesn't accept the world as it is. Indeed. What agitation brings you in today, Henry? I've been, sir, I, I've been meaning to ask you if you knew anyone who could receive me, say I es escaped to a free state. I do have a little bit of money, and if you were to assist me, I'd pay you for so doing. Why, you have much to risk in a journey heading north. How much money have you saved for your enterprise? I have $166, and I can pay you half. God doesn't judge a man by his color. He judges a man by his heart. I felt the hand of God take a swing at my soul. Now I come mighty close to going to hell in my life now. I was gonna do what's right. Henry, you're gonna need a good excuse for your overseer boss to let you out of your daily labors, at least for a day or two, or else you'll think you've run off and we'll send the dogs after you within a minute and you'll be gone. No, no, Henry, Henry, that is vitriol. That will burn you right down to the bone. I know, sir. I know. myself in him. I know what I must do. His freedom's entwined with mine. Tonight we must decide the time. My fears of being caught have haunted me till now. I'll do this thing for him. I cannot deny your urgent appeal, but our secret must never be revealed. Our future, our fate, are now in God's hands, and I know this much is true. Each soul must take a stand. Yes, I must pay a price. Free my soul. I understand. Call my friend, my brother, to freedom land. Twas free is that taught my Grace of 
appropriate pay. And you will help me to buy it. Your freedom, sir. Not all bondage is with chains. Mm. So, Master Samuel Smith agreed to ship me from Richmond to Philadelphia. I attempted several shipments of slaves from Richmond to Philadelphia. Eventually, I was discovered and arrested. In November of 1849, I was sentenced to six and one half years in a state penitentiary. Get all these crates onto the wagon and put them on the train, all right? Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please take care. I uh, take uh, care of the care notice prescribed to the shipment. <clears throat> this side up with care. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh! 
himself to the will of God and lifted his soul in prayer. I'm tired of standing. Why don't we move this crate and sit in it, sir? He was thrown to his right side, then to his left, and finally, right side up. What do you think, in here? Well, male, I guess, sir. I am male. I the kind of am match. <laughs> The next place at which they arrived was the city of Washington! <laughs> Where he was taken from the steamboat, placed on a wagon, and carried to the depot. This side that would care! Wait in the water, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait in the water. Sir, I need some help with this crane to get to the wagon. Just throw it off! If this, this monk this side that would care, if I thought of it, I might break some. It don't matter if you break all the city. The railway company's able enough to pay for it. No sooner were these words spoken than he began to tumble from his wagon, falling on the end where his head was. His neck gave a snap, as if his head snapped to sunder and he was knocked completely insensible. There's no room for the box. It'll have to remain and be sent to the wall with the luggage train. Sir, this marked express and it must go on. We are in port and at Philadelphia. The box was transported by wagon. Railroad, steamboat, wagon. Railroad. Ferry. Railroad. And finally, get delivery wagon. Oh. I'm here to collect the box from Richmond, Virginia, Ship Express. Right here. Was placed on a cart and delivered to the house of James Miller McKim, where Samuel had arranged for him to be received. We've been expecting you. Oh! Oh, oh, let us drop upon the box and see if he is alive. Is all right within? Oh! oh. 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 Our joy, dear friend, is so very great to see that you are alive. Oh, 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 oh. someone fetch the water. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> he had risen as if from the dead. He felt much more than he could readily express. We bid you a hearty welcome to the to your possessions of your natural rights, sir. Yeah. I waited patiently on the Lord. Well, well that's yes. 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 Tyrants, remorseless, destitute of religion. And every principle of humanity sat at the couch of his mother. And as he entered the world, before he had done anything, they forfeited his right to liberty. At last, Henry had a birthday, March 30th, 1849, his first day of freedom. In my heart, move the hurt, the pain, the fear that rips us all apart. I kneel beside you here today. I kneel with you and pray that we are friends today and all I yesterday.
Tomorrow.